I found myself falling in love with this guy right here, Mac Jones. So Mac Jones is working out with the guy that apparently uh, has been training Saquon Barkley and a couple other dudes. And this is what you want to see if you're a Patriot fan. A guy totally committed in the offseason to uh, you know, get stronger, get better. And uh, he actually came out himself and said, look, I think we I don't know if we have a photo of this or full screen, whatever it might be. Uh, but he wants to, quote unquote, now re-earn some respect. Now, I love that. I, I think, and I'm not a Patriot fan, I hate him, uh, but I like Mac Jones a lot, partially because he's not very good, and I'm a Jet. But from a standpoint of a guy that wants to be good, that is clearly committed to what it takes, you guys can speak that more than I can. Like, the amount of lonely hours in the gym, on a track, in a weight room, what have you, to become great at your craft, I respect the work ethic. What you have to understand about Mac Jones here is that it also wasn't solely his fault. He sure. was he was dealt a bad hand in Matt Patricia and Joe Judge really as his coordinators. Now that all changes this year because Jimmy O'Brien's back in town, yes. and that dude is a badass, right. right? He will get in your grill, but he's also an accomplished offensive guru, right? I love that though. If you're a Patriot fan and you see a guy going into a huge third year uh, with a lot of question marks, the fact that uh, he's taking ownership of having to re-earn the respect of a locker room, I think it's great. I love that statement. The workout videos, it's our job to work out. I'm unimpressed by workout videos. Okay. Like, like, that's our job. We have two hours, three hours to work out a day. That's our job, work out. But I like the part about re-earning uh, uh, kind of his teammates' respect and, and whatnot. But you're exactly right. Bill O'Brien is a real offensive coordinator. Yes. He's a successful offensive coordinator. Mac Jones now in this year has to show that he's the guy. You have a real coach. You have a real offensive line coach now. Hopefully they get you some more weapons. But now you have to show that you are the quarterback they expect you to be because there's no excuses. There's no Matt Patricia. There's no Joe Judge. You have a good defense. Yep. You have a good head coach, obviously, Hall of Fame head coach, the best head coach of all time, and a real coordinator now. You have to make that jump. Now, Matthew Judon, who's one of their star players, came out and said he didn't have to re-earn anything. We of respect course. him. Yes. But, you know, he's being a good teammate there. But, you know, look at the uh, the ranks suck, right? Not good. And even with all that and the incompetence of Joe Judge and Matt Patricia uh, doing something they've never yeah. been asked to do before, be the you know, offensive coordinators, the you know, quarterback coach and whatnot, the Patriots were a game away from making the playoffs, yes. which is as much about the genius, I think, of Bill Belichick. Absolutely. But Mac Jones is a part of that. Yeah. Like, you've seen glimpses. Now, I don't think he's great. I don't think he's ever going to be thought of as a top-10 quarterback. But to be fair, two years, two different coordinators, and year two, two guys who are incompetent, no more excuses. You now have a legitimate offensive coordinator who knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And he also has a reputation, O'Brien does, of not tolerating, you know, stupidity. Yeah. Or a guy that doesn't understand where the ball's supposed to go. So, uh, from a New England Patriots standpoint, I think this offseason already has been a success. It's, it's, I think we need to make sure that we don't confuse the Bill O'Brien coach and Bill O'Brien general manager because the, the general manager part, he was a disaster in Houston. The team was actually pretty good when he was there. Like, guys, this is a real coach. Like, he will get Mac Jones to where he needs to be. Yeah, you're exactly right. Is he going is he, is he, is he to win the Super Bowl? I don't know, but he'll get him in the playoffs. And once you're in the playoffs, you have a chance to win. That's yeah. all you can ask for. Yeah. And I think it's playoffs or bust this year. It's year three for Mac Jones. You have a real coach, real everything. You need to get some weapons. Hopefully, they get some wide receivers. Yeah, the, the real problem yeah. for New England is that that if two is back from the concussion stuff, and there's Tough no division. guarantee about that, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, the New York Jets are acquiring a legitimate quarterback, whether it's Wait, Aaron Rodgers, whether it's Derek Carr, whether it's Jimmy Garoppolo, they're going to have a competent quarterback, yeah. whomever that guy might be. Mm -hmm. You can make the argument right now today that New England's going to have the worst quarter starting quarterback yes. in the AFC East. Right? Could happen. And now that's, you know, based on two is uh, concussion and mental, I would say mental health. Yeah. But you know what I mean? You know, him recovering yeah, 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 yes, from concussions and being able to play. But as good as Bill O'Brien might be, and I think is, I like Bill O'Brien a lot. Yo, know, I'm going to make the argument right now that New England's got the worst quarterback in the division. They do. Is right? Mac Jones with Bill O'Brien worse than Tua? I'm not a Tua guy, but I can't argue what he did when he was on the field. Yeah, really that good. offense yeah. was legit. I mean, Tyree Kill was going to have 2,000 yards yeah. and 150 catches. And I'm not a Tua guy. I know. But I can't argue that he was on his way to a potential MVP.
We, we need to see Mac Jones with a legitimate number one wide receiver, whatever that is. Maybe it's Hopkins. You trade, you know, he's open for business in Arizona. Get right. Yourself, like, get yourself a legitimate number one wide receiver to give Mac Jones a chance to be as good as you hope he can be. That being said, uh, Aaron Rodgers is now days away from his Fugazi <laughs> dark house. And Derek Carr, as far as we know, hasn't done much. We did learn something yesterday in that regard. And that is while the New York Jets never agreed to anything with New, uh, with um, – I'm sorry, uh, with the Vegas Raiders, like the Saints did, yeah. when there was the thought that maybe Derek would allow himself to be traded, we did learn yesterday that the Jets absolutely had conversations with the Vegas Raiders Good. about what that compensation would be. A, they never agreed to it. B, I'm sure they were told by Derek Carr's representatives, just hang tight. Yeah, don't worry about it. He ain't going anywhere <laughs> yeah. until they let him go. Yeah. And now, you know, the Jets, like a lot of teams, are on that uh, clock of... How long do we wait for Aaron Rodgers? And if we wait too long, do we screw ourselves with Derek Carr? Mm-hmm. Now, Derek Carr doesn't need to be in a rush because outside of Aaron Rodgers, Derek Carr is the best-looking girl at the prom. Yes. It really is. So whether it's the Saints, whether it's the Jets, whether it's uh, Tennessee, whether it's Carolina with Frank Reich, Derek Carr can sit back and just chill, wait to see if Aaron Rodgers leaves Green Bay. I still think he's staying there. If he leaves, I think he goes to Vegas. That's what I think. And then if you're Derek Carr, let all the teams come to you and beg you to play for them and outbid each other to try to get you. See, and this, this is a very rare thing where Derek Carr is in a position where waiting will equate to much more money. Because once Aaron Rodgers figures out where he's going, outside of the Raiders, which Derek's obviously not playing for, there's going to be a rush of yes. play for us, play for us, play yeah. for us, play for us. And that means I will outbid you, you will outbid him, you will outbid him, and on and on and on. So do you officially think Aaron Rodgers will have clarity before we know about Derek Carr? Well, it's a good question, County. Yeah. I don't think Aaron Rodgers will ever have clarity on anything. <laughs> I think he's such a weirdo that today it might be white, tomorrow it might be black. Uh-huh. Wednesday might be purple. Thursday might be pink. Mm-hmm. I don't know what goes through that guy's head. All I know is this. If I'm him, I stay in Green Bay. I propose to Mallory Edens, okay. the billionaire daughter of the owner of the Milwaukee yes. Bucks. Smart move. And I live my life out in that setting because life is easy. For, for, for even get, like competitively, if you stay in Green Bay, you're the best quarterback in the NFC Conference. Well, right? and that's like, the other point. Yeah. Why come to the AFC where at some level you have to go through Mahomes, Burrow, Herbert, Lawrence? Right. Mm-hmm. Like staying in Green Bay allows the opportunity. I mean, you're you're the best quarterback, or right? You, you really are the best. The quarterback. The only like, problem you have if you stay in Green Bay is right now on paper yeah. is San Francisco. Yeah, that's the only legitimate. Who doesn't really threat. have a quarterback. Right now, that they yeah. Now I say that recognizing the Packers had him and didn't make the playoffs this past year. Of course, yeah. But you have to assume they're going to get better. Those young wide receivers, another year in the system. I stay in Green Bay because I know that the road to a Super Bowl is a lot easier in the NFC than the AFC. Is it still that easy, considering the fact that the Vikings are still there? They're getting. They just got Flores. That Mike's Kirk Cousins. Okay. Okay. What about the what about the Lions? The Lions got better. Lions are the Lions. You were all over the Lions this year. Yeah, I give the Lions a lot of credit. They're still a quarterback. Way though the Lions. Well, I think Goff had a great year. By the way, great year. Their defense stinks. They're still all right. Guys. And while Goff had a great year, now you're asking to replicate his, the best year of his career. Yeah. Uh, I give the Lions credit. They will. They will fight you to the end. But again, if I'm 37 years old or whatever he is, and I'm taking stock of, I got two years left in my you know physical prime where I can maybe win a title. Is it easier for me to stay in Green Bay? Right? Mm -hmm. And try to get to a Super Bowl through the NFC or try to navigate Mahomes, Burrow, Allen, Herbert, Lawrence. I I mean, no matter how you cut it, the NFC is easier. Is his goal, though, winning a title or is his goal just being happy where he's playing, winning an MVP, putting up his number? I have no idea. I think he's one of the most high maintenance prima donnas I've ever laid my eyes on. Because I would say, if if your ultimate goal, obviously, is to win a championship, Green Bay is the best place to be. Well, I disagree. I mean, if Green Bay is willing to trade you to an NFC team, that other NFC team, I just don't think they're willing to trade him within the conference, nor should they. 
So if you leave the conference, uh, you can make an argument the Jets are the best place because their defense and their yeah, young yeah. wide receiver core. I can make an argument that you go to Josh McDaniel uh, in Vegas yeah. and Devontae yeah, Adams the is there with Waller and Josh Jacobs. And Renfro. Uh, and a decent uh, – well, no, that's not fair. Their defense sucks. Defense is bad. Uh, but it's I can the, make an argument to them. But the New York Jets – have put themselves in a position where you have to con seriously consider yes. that that gives me the best shot in the AFC to compete with Mahomes, Burrow, Allen, blah, blah, and blah. You get, a, you get a healthy hall and a healthy offensive line, too. Yeah. You kind of have a really good core of, of players there. Yeah. Meanwhile, I just talked about all those AFC quarterbacks, and I didn't even mention Lamar Jackson. Oh, man. And it came out yesterday that – all the guys that were interviewing yeah. to become the new offensive coordinator uh, in Baltimore, they went with Todd Munkin from Georgia. Yes. But of all the guys that they talked to, the story is uh, unconfirmed by the Ravens, of course, but the rumors and the allegations out there that all those candidates, and apparently they interviewed like 14 different guys for the job. The first question all those guys had was, is Lamar Jackson my quarterback? Yeah. And the answer was, can't guarantee it. Can't I guarantee mean, it. It's a fair answer. He's not under contract for the next couple of now, years. Now, he's going to get franchised. Sure, but is he year. franchised and dealt? Is he franchised and extended? You could also franchise him and then franchise him again. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, I, like, if I was an offensive coordinator candidate, that's the obvious first question. Yes. Who's my quarterback? Because uh -huh. if it ain't him... Who's it going to be, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, you're, you're exactly right. But it, it's a fair answer, right? Because as of right now, he's not under a long-term contract. So if you just say, yeah, he's my quarterback long-term, well, the OC says, well, w where? You've been signed him to a long-term deal. So I get the honesty of that. Todd Munkin's offense, I think, can work for any quarterback. But obviously, Lamar is the best quarterback he can ever have. Sure. And so, he's a pass-happy yes. quarterback. Yeah. And right? So I, I'm, I'm hopeful that Lamar stays. I think the offense will be good for him. But obviously, he, he needs to get the contract that he wants to stay. Yeah. And listen, it just, again, we're in a, you're in the AFC, man. If you don't have a stud quarterback, you ain't winning. Yeah. So if, if I'm uh, Steve Biscotti, a uh, dry Italian dessert cookie, uh, <laughs> I do everything in my power to make sure that my guy's uh, locked up and good to go. I'm with you, Biscotti. Right? Are gross. Oh, it's disgusting. Even when dipped in chocolate, oh, it's disgusting. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1, so check them out too.